Hi guys, thanks again for visiting us at RS Aquaculture. As you might know, we actually use this nursery in our biofog farm where we will grow the shrimp up to certain sizes before we actually transfer them to the grow out tank. So is this really necessary as this is one of the most important questions that we usually get in our course. And this video, I'll be sharing in detail do we need a nursery for our shrimp farm. Welcome back guys. For those who are new to RS Aquaculture, we actually produce content with regards to shrimp farming and mud crab farming, either using RAS systems or even Biofox system. So do like and subscribe if you like our content on these topics so that you'll get a weekly notification. So back to this week's video. One of the key reasons that we prefer to use a nursery is that in a nursery we actually run the shrimps at a higher stocking density so usually in the nursery is about 2000 to 3000 and you can see over here most of our system needs to be retrofitted with nets to prevent the pls from actually going into our filtration system so it's slightly different from how we run our grow out in terms of uh, the filtration sizing and we typically like to grow them up to one gram uh, and we can usually get that about three to four weeks assuming that we start off with about pl10 so one of the important reasons for us uh, to do this, it is because after the nursery stage, we are actually able to count the PLs a bit more accurately before we transfer. And this has severe implications, especially on our grow out side, because it allows us to stock our grow out pond in a more accurate manner. Um, typically, you know, how we do it is we can actually weigh the shrimps uh, like that because typically after 28 days or even 3 weeks, the shrimps would be actually 1 gram. And it's when we transfer, we just weigh the net total in terms of, uh, for example, kilogram, let's say it's 1,000 kilo. So that will correspond to about 1,000 small shrimps and we will transfer them directly in our grow out tank. So we can see that it's, we're actually transferring you know the shrimps into our bigger grow out tank this is actually our 100 cubic meter grow out tank so this has a couple of uh, important benefits because usually pl that is coming out from the hatchery unless they have actually specific uh, shrimp counters you do not know what's your actual stocking in the pond and based on our experience uh, hatcheries are you know being very nice to us they'll give you additional 10 to 20 percent that's not a big problem if your low stock if your pond is operated in the low stocking density for example like 70 or 80 counts um, per cubic meter 80 uh, pieces per cubic meter but it becomes a problem when your intended stocking is for example much higher in the range of um, 500 or even 300 and above because even more 20% more it actually causes the whole system to be quite unstable because your filtration system are not keep up to it um, typically you know some people might argue you can actually count the PLs on your way during the stocking uh, for example you can see the PL about PL10 then we actually buy from the hatchery but the problem is usually you don't have enough time because you'll be picking up you'll be picking up the 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 post larvae from hatchery that's probably one to two hours away and you'll be stocking them into a pond and you have to do a bunch of things like acclimatization uh, checking the health cert for example checking how many bags and all are all the larvae viable so usually based on our experience you know depending on the weather we usually do not have adequate time to to sort and even count not even uh, for example, one to two bags, and in typical in our pond, we will usually take up to fifty to one hundred bags. So it's simply not economical, and it's not viable to actually start counting on a very larger stage. And what we prefer to do is to do this on the nursery. We dump all the PLs in the nursery, and we will count it once we transfer to the grow up. So you can see direct stocking. You know, it's um, it's possible, but it's not ideal because you don't know how much you actually have. The second reason why we like to run nursery is because after the nursery process, we actually do disease testing, right? This is very important is because if you already suspect there's an issue on your nursery, obviously you do not transfer that shrimps into the pond. Um, even though you are doing liner pond or even earthen pond, which I'll explain in a little bit. 
right? So if you're doing a pond liner, it is most likely that you will actually have uh, your water being treated, you put up your probiotics already, and you do not want to be transferring shrimps that are infected into a grout pond. So typically what we'll do is to get the shrimps at about a three-week mark, obviously it's smaller than this, and we will put it in ethanol and to preserve it, and we'll send it to a third-party lab to screen for EMS, EHP, and even WSSV. In the event that they are infected, uh, you probably do better if you just discarded the whole batch away as opposed to trying to put them in the pond, right? This is because even in uh, liner ponds, you will spend a substantial cost for you to, for example, to treat the water or even uh, bring in the water and do the necessary treatment. And this cost is usually much higher when you're running an earthen pond because, as you might know, we, we do run earthen pond as well in one of our farms uh, in Malaysia. And an earthen pond over time will accumulate a lot of sludge material in the middle. So you can see this is a farm that has been abandoned. And even that, um, when we first take over it, you can see a lot of sludge from the accumulated process. So what you have to do is to ensure that you remove the sludge by a long arm excavator, or you either dry them or put a bunch of lime to ensure that the soil is dry and full of and, and, you know, it doesn't carry any pathogen or even high organic matter into the water. So all that effort will be wasted if you do not check your PL or screen your PL before putting in, right? And if you realize that your PL is infected and you transfer into the pond, and your pond then becomes infected, obviously you have to do all of the drying and post-treatment again before you can restock. So that creates a lot of wastage in terms of time and number of crops you can squeeze out every year. So hopefully that's all for this video. We hope you learned something and we again love to see you back at RS Aquaculture. Again, we produce loads of content with regards to shrimp farming and muckrat farming and we are excited to see you back again on our channel. So do like and subscribe.